Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, welcome to this vlog. Today is Friday and I'm working from home. I would classify today as a medium busy day. For the past four to five months I've been working on this big system at work and it's kind of like a batch processing system which was built for a specific event that's gonna happen. And this event is finally upon us, so it's finally time to run our system for the first time in production. So yeah, wish me luck. I just checked my calendar and today I have no meetings, only stand-up. I'm a lucky girl. So I checked my calendar, I checked some Slack messages that I got overnight, and now I'm gonna go and prepare some breakfast. I'm kind of craving another coffee, but I already had a coffee in the morning. I didn't film it, so you guys didn't see it, but I had a coffee in bed in the morning. I like to have a coffee in bed alone before anyone speaks to me and before I have to speak to anyone else. <laughs> I noticed that I have been more fidgety lately. I'm not sure if that's a word. I've been drinking too much coffee and it's making me more nervous and more anxious and I'm gonna have to reduce my coffee intake. I washed some blueberries and some raspberries. I love having these in the morning. So my building has a common area where everyone can get coffee. It has like a really good coffee machine. And I usually just go there and get my coffee there because why not? It's free. I secured the coffee. I mean, the decaf. I don't know if I'm allowed to call that coffee. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you my breakfast. <laughs> I'm having these rice crackers, which I got at an Asian supermarket that opened recently in the area where I lived in. And I'm honestly addicted to them, like they're so good. It's not the best breakfast, but I need to go grocery shopping for sure because I don't have a lot at home right now. This is the notebook I use every day to plan my day, write down my to-do list, and kind of also express gratitude and do a bit of journaling. So I can show you quickly. It has sort of a daily check-in with a code of the day. And then we can write down something that we're looking forward to today. What are the biggest opportunities of the day? What we will commit to? And then it has kind of a generic checklist. And then this is the productivity part. We can write down our goals or kind of our to-do list for the day. We can share some notes and thoughts and we can write down some things that we're grateful for. Wish that I could stay Wish for this moment to never go away But it's all in my mind I love it when the sun shines into the apartment. It looks so nice and it makes me so happy. Yesterday my shower got clogged and then the floor in my bathroom was completely full of water. Then I had to soak it up with some towels, so I did some laundry yesterday evening and I'm gonna take care of it now. And though I know that there is nothing to find You're a beautiful sight in the summer night And you can't put up a fight in the misty light so it's 5 p.m. I'm gonna log off soon. I just need to give an update to my team. I usually sit here at the end of the day. I put a pillow on the floor and then I just relax a bit and I do the end of my work here and I stare out the window because it's just very pretty at this time. done for today i just logged off i'm so glad the days are getting longer again i'm kind of falling behind on the water so in one of my latest youtube videos i gave a design proposal for a new speed system and you guys seem to have enjoyed it quite a lot and you also left some comments saying that it can be hard sometimes to find good content around system design especially for beginners I also had trouble when I was learning how to code and finding good explanations for the basics and how the basics kind of connected together. I feel like there are a lot of videos about complex systems like chat systems, news feed systems like design Instagram, design YouTube. You find YouTube videos where engineers go very in-depth 
around this topic, but I find that there's not a lot of content about the basics, like what is the load balancer? So maybe I can do something about that at some point. But for today's system design segment, I wanted to design a chat system, something like WhatsApp and Discord and Slack. So let's get started. So our goal is to design a chat system. And the requirements of our system are, first of all, it needs to allow us to send direct messages, so one-to-one -one messaging with someone else. The second requirement is group chats, but they are limited up to 50 people. Another requirement is that we only need to support text messages. And we expect a daily average volume of 10 million users. And our messages are limited in length of up to 50,000 characters. And these are the things that are out of scope. So for example, we're not going to focus much on the push notification system. We're not going to consider image and video messaging. We're also not going to consider the online and the offline status. And we're not going to worry much about how to generate a unique ID inside a distributed system, because that, again, is also kind of like a mini system in itself. So the basics of a chat system are the sender client, the receiver client, the chat server, and then some sort of database where we store the message history. The most efficient communication protocol to use for messaging applications is WebSockets. These are WebSocket connections. There are other ways to establish communication between clients and servers, such as HTTP or long polling, but WebSockets is considered the standard for sending asynchronous messages between a client and a server because it is bidirectional and it is persistent. However, our chat application will not just support sending messages. We will probably have things like sign up and sign in and, and like account management and settings. And these things can operate under normal REST APIs and like HTTP. It's just that the messaging part in itself needs to be WebSockets or it should be WebSockets ideally. So our application will look a bit differently for one-to-one -one chats and for group chats. But the thing that these two things will have in common is the service discovery. And this is the part of our system that will recommend what is the most adequate server that a client should connect to. And this is usually determined based on the geographic location and the capacity. So let's look at the service discovery system first. Sorry about this. I wanted to write all of this down again, but I didn't have any more paper. So this will have to do. <laughs> in the service discovery, the user will log in and the load balancer sends a request to the API servers. The API servers call an authentication API endpoint. So once the user is authenticated, the service discovery algorithm will pick what is the best chat server from those that are available. And this information is then returned to the user. And once the user knows that, it will establish a WebSocket connection to the correct chat server. And this is how the service discovery would work on a high level. Now let's look at a direct one-to-one -one message flow. Each user needs to be connected to a chat server. So user A in this case is connected to server one and user B is connected to server two. So A sends a message to chat server one. The server gets a unique message ID from the ID generator system and then sends this message to the queue to be stored in the database. In terms of data storage, a NoSQL key value pair database is probably the best shot at storing the chat history. This is because we will have to store large amounts of data because usually that's the case for chat applications. And these kind of databases provide low latency data access, which is good for our system. And we can also scale horizontally more easily through partitions. The primary key for a one-to-one -one chat system, as well as for a group chat system, should probably be the message ID. And this message ID should be sortable by time so that newer messages have a higher ID than older messages. And this is how we can guarantee the order of messages in a chat history. Then we can also store things like created at, so we have a timestamp field, the message body from and to, etc. Then if user B is online, the message is forwarded to chat server two, where user B is also connected to through WebSockets, so user B gets the message. If user B is not online, then a push notification needs to be sent using a push notification system which is kind of out of scope for this exercise as well. Now let's look at a group chat. So this is a simplified diagram of a group chat. Let's assume that we have three users in our group chat, user A, B, and C. So user A is connected to a chat server and wants to send a message to the group. This message should have attributes like the message ID created at, like we had in the one-to-one -one chat, um, also a message body, obviously, but then it should have a group chat ID and a user ID as well. This server needs to get a list of all the members in this group chat based on a chat ID. This message will then get distributed to each individual message queue associated to each member of the group chat. 
And this is possible because we have a very small group chat up to only 50 people. If we grow in chat users, let's say uh, chat groups in the order of like tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people, inserting the message into each individual user's message queue will probably not scale. So once we insert it into the message queue, the system will follow a very similar approach to what it does in the individual messages. So from here onwards, it works the same way for each user in the group chat. So I didn't repeat it in this diagram. So this is how we can kind of reuse the logic for one-to-one -one messages for our group chat. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I would be super interested in knowing if any of you have ever designed such an application. I haven't. I only played around with WebSockets once for a bit for a mini project. <laughs> so that's the extent of my hands-on knowledge. This is all kind of theoretical. So yeah, I never developed this application, uh, but I think it's a good starting point if I ever were to develop it. Quick intermission in the video. I just wanted to say that I'm very grateful and I thank you all for supporting my channel, for watching my videos and also for allowing me to collaborate with brands that I like. And NordVPN is sponsoring this segment of the video. I've used a few different VPNs over the years, but NordVPN really is the most reliable one that I've tried. I started using them last year because my boyfriend has been subscribed to them for years and the service is just impeccable and it really never lets you down. I believe a VPN in general is just something very useful to have, especially if you travel a lot or you work abroad occasionally, so that you can keep accessing all the websites you need and consume the content that you want. It is also useful if you want to hide your online activity when you're in a public network such as a coffee shop or at an airport. I use NordVPN mostly on my laptop when traveling. For example, when I go to Portugal to visit my family, I am usually connected to a UK server, so I have access to all the local websites. NordVPN has useful anti-malware features such as malware detection in your downloads and blocking malicious URLs. So if you're looking for a VPN, make sure to check them out at nordvpn.com slash csjackie. You can get four months for free on a two-year plan and there's a money-back guarantee in case you change your mind. You can get an exclusive NordVPN deal if you use the link in my description and at the same time, you're also supporting my channel. Thank you so much and now back to the video. Getting dressed, I'm gonna go to the supermarket and buy some groceries because I literally have nothing for breakfast tomorrow. So tomorrow is Saturday and everyone deserves to have a nice breakfast on Saturday and Sunday. Thinking this one. Perfect. I'm gonna tell my boyfriend that I made this, but this is actually like a waitress ready meal. YOLO. Do you also sometimes get like a random slice of cheese from the fridge and you just eat it? It's the best. I have a gym in the building and I still don't use it, as you all know. I went to a gymnastics club at the gym with a friend of mine from work. It was raining and I literally stepped into mud. I don't know if I should just wash them, if this will come off or if I need to do something else. If you follow me on Instagram, you know this already, but I'm moving very soon. And today is Monday and I literally need to be out of my flat by Thursday next week so like in a week and a half it's not even two weeks it's a week and a half and i haven't started packing and i have quite a lot of things now in this flat i'm a bit stressed out to be honest <laughs> but yeah anyway so i found a new apartment but i can only move in in may so i'm gonna stay with my boyfriend for a few weeks Oops, someone's calling me i'm ready let's go and work out i love this bottle the only downside is that it's hard to clean